So our girls are over here on the back side of the property and we've just been kind of bumping them along the yard here every day or every couple days. But they're tired of eating just kale and chicken food and yard grass. They're ready for some good stuff. What's up Lazy Dog fam? I hope everybody out there is having a wonderful day. It's still hot and dry here. Thankfully, we do have a little bit of a breeze today, so that helps. Looks like we could get a good bit of rain this weekend. We surely need it, so we'll see what happens. The best chances we've had in quite a while, almost a month, so hopefully we get some good rain. With that impending rain, we've got a few things we need to get done in the garden today. We've got some elephant garlic back here, which will wrap up. All of our garlic harvesting, we need to go ahead and get it pulled. It's showing signs that it's ready to harvest. And we got to get that area ready for sweet potatoes. Our slips from Steel Plant Company should be arriving in the next week. So we need to be ready to plant those when we get them in the mail. Then also today, we're going to be going ahead and getting some cover crops in the ground. It's crazy to think we're already thinking about and already planting warm season cover crops, but we've got our onion plot which is almost empty now. And so we're gonna put something in the ground there, talk about cover crops a little bit, and that cover crop will do wonders for our soil, but also feed our chickens as well. So in this plot here, we still have that kale still kicking along. I've been feeding a good bit of that to the chickens lately just because we can't keep up with eating it all. And I want to keep harvesting it so it'll hopefully keep growing. So the chickens have surely been enjoying that. Got a lot of flowers here. Most of them are doing well, especially our giant marigolds. Those giant sunflowers there are doing pretty well. Lost a few of my azuratum plants, but I got some backups in the greenhouse. I need to stick those in the ground before we get all this rain. And then we mosey on over here. We've got a good bit of blank space where we've already harvested four rows of garlic. And then we have our elephant garlic here. Now I tried to cut the scapes off on all of these but you can see there there's a few that i missed but once they form those scapes and once we cut them off when we start seeing the plants dying back like this that's how we know they're ready to harvest so if you've been following along we did pretty good with our soft neck garlic both the artichoke and the silver skin types and those are definitely harder to grow in my opinion than the elephant garlic is that was our first time this year growing soft neck we grow elephant garlic every year and it's pretty easy to grow anywhere we're not counting on some cold weather for stratification usually it always makes cloves so Fingers crossed. I've never got skunked on elephant garlic, but we're about to see how we did this year. Maybe I'm no better than the man who pays a dollar for a fee. Maybe I'm no different than the ones who are running all of this. All right, so that's all of them right there. Most of these are average or maybe a little bit above average. We do have a few monsters. I put the monsters over here. So those are the big ones right there. A couple of those are big as my fist. So we did pretty good with some of these. Didn't do terrible at all. Got a few little ones in there, like we can see right there. But I'd say, you know, that's pretty par for the course of what we normally do with elephant garlic, except those right there. Those might be some of the biggest that we've ever grown. I definitely think the straw does help keep the soil cooler, helps them keep from going to seed quite as quick, extends the harvest window a little bit. So I'll definitely be using the straw again on garlic. Now before we go to the barn and try to find a spot on our storage rack for all this elephant garlic, let's talk about how we're going to get this ready for sweet potatoes. So several videos ago we talked about this and some people said why don't you just leave the straw there as mulch for the sweet potatoes. Well I like to heal my sweet potatoes and so if the straw is there I can't really heal them up. Now this is a plot we're going to leave no till just kind of see how it goes over the next few years but I need to get this straw out of here because I don't think it's going to work really well with the way we like to grow sweet potatoes. So I'm going to take the straw out either rake it out or get my blower and blow it in a big pile probably just put it in my compost bins 
and we are going to provide an update on the compost bins soon maybe not the next video but within the next couple videos we'll show you guys how those are coming along we'll probably just use some of the straw as kind of a bottom layer in one of our compost bins and because it's so hot out here gotta have you a little snack some of our thornless blackberries behind me are starting to get ready this makes a good little treat hmm. so where are we gonna put all this elephant garlic our old storage rack here is getting loaded down getting full and running out of room we went a little overboard on the garlic growing and the onions this year and since we added all those big old red onions we've got almost two full racks here completely full now i wanted to save this bottom rack here for taters although i don't know if that's going to be enough space for all the taters we grew or not we'll have to see how good we did on our taters pretty soon so can't go on the bottom those two racks are pretty much full so i reckon we'll have to go up top here i usually don't put anything up here and just use this for storage of you know bins and tarps and stuff but i had to scoot all that over and i think this is where the elephant garlic's going to have to go well i had to use my old handy dandy camping stool to be able to get up here and uh see what i was doing but we got them all up there all three rows of it that's a heap of elephant garlic We'll have plenty to eat and plenty of seed stock for next year. All right, now let's address this plot behind me here, which was formerly our onion plot. So this is our oldest no-till plot going on almost two years now. I had a bunch of bulbing onions in here and we've been harvesting those, letting those cure over the last month or so. Got those out of here on that storage rack I showed you earlier. Got all the drip tape out of here. We had some Tadorna leeks over here. We harvested a few of those a couple videos ago. I got the rest of those out of here this morning. You see we left all that kind of root structure in the soil there, which is what we try to do with these no-till plots. So a little chunky right there, but I think it'll be all right. Still have this row of jumper leeks, which are not ready yet. We're just gonna leave those there and see what happens with those and then on this end over here we did have some bunching onions left in the soil they weren't really edible they had done got kind of all tough and fibrous you can see the stumps down there i came in here with a mower and just mowed them down as close as i could just kind of scalped them and you want to talk about something that'll make you squall you go mow down some onions man that was the strongest smell and I had my glasses on and it was still getting in my eyes. It was rough for a while. It took me probably about 20 minutes to get over it after I mowed them down. But now we've got it all relatively cleaned up and it's ready to plant. And so we're gonna be putting some cover crops in here. Now you may be wondering, Trav, why are you planting cover crops right now instead of planting more vegetables? Well, here's the thing. Down here, this late in the game, there's not a whole lot we can plant right now you know coming in to the end of may we can plant sweet potatoes we already got a spot where we're going to put those we could plant more okra and i'm going to plant more okra just not right yet i could probably plant another round of squash and cucumbers and i might do that in the next couple weeks but i don't need a whole plot of those i just need to find me a little sliver somewhere plant a few more plants so can't plant any more tomatoes there's a lot of things we can't plant because it's about to get really really hot and so at this point a cover crop is our best option and so the cover crop is not only going to feed our soils we'll get a wide range of benefits as far as our soils go but it's also going to feed our girls so our girls are over here on the back side of the property and we've just been kind of bumping them along the yard here every day or every couple days but well, they're tired of eating just kale and chicken food and yard grass they're ready for some good stuff and we've been getting some really good egg production from these ladies lately let's see what we got in here so far today looks like we got three eggs back there we've been getting anywhere from five to six every single day so really good production from these ladies and i'm going to be interested to see how the production changes when we back off the food again 
once they do start eating this cover crop we're going to plant in a minute so a couple days ago we got an order in the mail from green cover seed i think we got three maybe four 10 pound bags of all different kind of warm season cover crops so let's go through these and i'll show you what we've got so the first thing we've got here is some tri-leaf hybrid pearl millet i haven't grown millet in seems like a couple years as a warm season cover crop and i don't really know why i like millet i've mostly grown brown top millet in the past i've never tried this particular type or variety of millet but it's supposed to be really good for grazing so i'm looking forward to it this is 10 pounds and i can feel that those seeds are really tiny so this bag right here will plant a pretty big area and we'll probably end up using this on more than one plot then we've got one of our favorites here which is sorghum sedan grass now there's several different varieties of sorghum or sorghum sedan grass out there that can be used as warm season cover crops and i'm not that well versed on the difference between the varieties nothing like i am with the clover and all the different types of clover and stuff so i don't really know a lot of the differences between the types of sorghum but on green covered seeds website they have kind of ratings or rankings as far as you know grazeability regrowth stuff like that so i picked the variety that was best for grazing and had the best regrowth because we want to be able to rotate the chickens around on this let them graze it let it grow back and let them graze it again so that's why i picked that's why i picked this particular variety called 2120 ms forage sort then we've got some forage soybeans here we tried soybeans last year and this no-till plot right here and they came up just okay i learned that with the soybeans you really need some fluffy tilled soil to plant these in and rake them in they'll germinate a lot better than germinating in that kind of dry compost layer on top of that no-till plot so we're going to plant a good bit of these we're not going to plant them in the no-till plots we're going to plant them in some of the other plots we can fluff up the soil and get these seeds kind of raked in there a little deeper and then lastly another one of my favorites would be the red ripper cow pea now you can eat these peas but we mostly grow them as a cover crop i like these a lot better than your plain old iron clay peas and the reason i do is because i like to plant them with the sorghum and these climb so they'll kind of climb up the sorghum stalks as it grows taller and taller with the iron clay peas what happens is the sorghum ends up just shading it out so i've did some testing with this and as far as a combo planting i like the red ripper peas a lot better and besides these four there are also several other options out there as far as warm season cover crops you can plant green cover seeds website talks about safflower being a great warm season cover crop we tried that last year and it did not care for our heat and humidity so we're not trying safflower again but somewhere in the middle of the country or northern part of the country it may do great sunflowers is another great cover crop that works as kind of a soil cleanser it's a good warm season cover crop sunflowers can certainly take the heat really well they're a little aggravating to mow down because the stalks get so thick so you almost need a bush hog to kind of mow them and terminate them that's kind of the same thing with sun hemp i don't grow sun hemp sun hemp is a really good warm season cover crop but i don't have a mower that can take it down you really need a rotary mower behind a tractor to take down the sun hemp because it's so fibrous and it'll get all twisted up in your lawnmower blades and stuff so i don't do a lot of sun hemp on the scale i have here without a tractor and then you've got buckwheat and there's nothing wrong with buckwheat but it's so short term and you plant buckwheat and it's flowering in four to five six weeks so i only grow buckwheat if it's a situation where i only have a month to work with you know this plot's only going to be open for a month and then i need to plant some vegetables in it i'll grow buckwheat then but buckwheat's not something i'm really going to grow for the chickens to graze because it goes to seed too quickly so i'm not a real big fan of buckwheat it has its place but for most of our situations we're wanting more long-term growth and that's why the sorghum sedan grass and those red ripper peas work really work really well for us now some of our struggles as far as getting seeds to germinate and getting transplants to take and start growing in this no-till plot with this fine compost layer are well documented but we learned a few things through trial and error last year so when we plant cover crops in our non-no-till plots or our teal plots 
we till it up nice and fluffy, we strow the seed by hand, then we comb over it with a rake, and because the soil is nice and fluffy, those seeds get buried pretty good with the rake. In this situation, we don't have a lot of fluffy soil here. We just have this really thin, kind of fine compost layer on top. And so the seeds don't get buried as deeply when we comb over it with a rake and that top compost layer tends to stay kind of dry. We have to give them more water. We really have to kind of babysit the seeds a little bit to get them up and going. But one thing I learned last year, and I think a subscriber was the person who recommended us trying this, was after raking over them to basically run over it with the lawnmower and use the lawnmower tires to kind of pack the seeds into the soil and we did start to get better germination when we tried that so that's what we're going to do this time as well so like i told you we're going to do a combo of this forged sorghum and red ripper peas in this plot now you can mix these together and stroll them at the same time but i've found that if it's just two cover crops like this two different ones i like to stroll them separately because the seeds on the sorghum are a good bit smaller than these cow peas here and i can get everything distributed a little more evenly if i don't mix them now if i'm working with three or four different ones i will mix them together now i always like to plant these cover crops at least twice as thick as the recommended seeding rate especially if they're going to be grazed like these are for these cow peas here since that's a legume we are going to inoculate those so i've got me a little bit of water in this cup here i've got some inoculant right here I'm going to pour in there and uh, just mix it up a little bit and then we'll pour it on our peas. Just going to dump that in there, stir it around with my hand and then we'll get those peas coated with it here in just a second. We'll pour about half this bag of peas and we'll dump our inoculant in there. A nice little slurry and we'll just mix them around so they're all coated so now we're ready to sling some seeds so we're going to strow those inoculated red ripper pea seeds first come back behind that with the sorghum then we're going to rake it in then we're going to run over it with a lawnmower to pack it in well, I'm just searching for a piece of mind. Just a traveler passing through for time. All right, all right, all right. That's about as good as I can do with the equipment I have. Now, we may not get stellar germination here where all these leak root clods are, but I did where I was able to pack them down a good little bit with those mower tires. So I got it a lot more smooth than it was. We'll see what happens. If this little sliver right here doesn't germinate, it's not gonna be a huge deal, as long as we get some good ground cover on all the rest of the plot. So I'll probably put an overhead sprinkler on that plot tonight and let it run for a couple hours at least. No point in putting that sprinkler on there right now when it's so hot out here and we'll lose half the water we're putting out. So I'll wait till tonight douse it down good then we'll hope and pray for some rain this weekend that would really help on getting this cover crop up and going might even have to start singing a phil collins song that worked last time so we might have to try that again now this particular combination of the sorghum sedan grass and the red ripper peas will get very tall if we let it so if we weren't going to graze this and we we're just going to let it grow until either the peas started forming pods or the sorghum started going to seed a lot of times it can get on up five six feet tall the sorghum plants and then the peas are climbing all along the sorghum plants but in this case we're going to graze it and i can't pull that chicken tractor through six foot of sorghum now what i do do in some cases with the sorghum is i just do kind of a a cut and come again so once it gets two or three foot tall i come through there with the mower on the high setting mow it it grows back mow it again and you can get a lot of good biomass addition that way with the chicken tractor i'll probably wait till it gets i don't know 18 inches two foot tall or so 
and then we'll move the chickens on here let them graze it around we'll see how much they wear it out it may be the case where we need to let them graze it one round and then we need to put the chickens off of this plot for a little bit let it recover and then put them back on there i don't know if this stuff is going to recover as fast as the clover did for us last fall and winter i've never grazed this stuff like we're going to graze it right now so we'll just kind of play it by ear and see i am probably going to plant another cover crop soon as soon as we get our taters out of that plot that they're in and so we'll have another plot established if we do need to move them off this one we can put them somewhere else where they can still feed our garden soil so stay tuned for a lot more updates and progress on this particular system this technique is probably one of my best techniques that i have about of all the things we do in our different garden plots the fact that we can feed our soil we can feed our chickens and we get that addition of the chicken manure is just a no-brainer it just works perfectly for what we do here and if you have any questions about growing cover crops, please put those in the comments below. I'll do my best to try to answer them for you. And if you're planning on growing any warm season cover crops this year, let me know in the comments below which ones you're going to grow. And because we're about to get our sweet potato slips soon, just a reminder out there, if you haven't ordered sweet potato slips and you're going to plant sweet potatoes, you can use our affiliate link below if you're watching on YouTube to Steel Plant Company. They've got lots of great choices there. Get you some sweet potato slips because that is one thing you can grow throughout the heat of the summer. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe, hit that notification button, like, and share. And we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm. Oh.